Hello IB Psychology students, this is the second video on how to write your IA report um, and this will be on the method section. So there are three parts in the method section and they're all worth two marks, so it's worth six marks in total. And the first one is called design, you can find it on page 42 of your booklet. Um, you need to read all this very carefully obviously but I just wanted to specify a couple of things so a lot of people make a mistake here they think design the design section is where you explain all the procedure but there is a procedure section so that's not where you explain the procedure okay um, instead here you need the IV uh, very important I know you've already included an IV in the introduction if you followed my instructions but I still think um, you need it again here and in fact it's specified that you need it here make sure you manipulate the IV which means you have to have two conditions of the IV so a good way to formulate an IV is to say um, the independent variable was whether this or that and then you show you've got a proper IV with two conditions that's the best way to formulate it then a DV remember that's so what you're trying to measure, um, so it should be measurable. Um, then, very important in this section, design actually means whether you are using repeated measures or independent measures. You should know what that means and you should know um, why you chose that design. So you always should have a justification. It doesn't need to be long just a couple of sentences is fine but it must be justified and then extremely important you need evidence that you uh, took all the ethical considerations into account so that's where uh, you explain how you prepared for uh, your experiment to be ethical so you wrote an informed consent letter for example um, you prepared some briefing notes and some debriefing notes, all the stuff you prepared to make sure your experiment was going to be ethical. Okay. Um, if your experiment includes any deceit, so any form of not telling participants something because it would mess up the experiment, then you must justify it, for instance, by saying that it didn't cause any major uh, trauma or you can say it doesn't, didn't cause any harm or something like that justify it, justify everything all this needs to be very efficiently written because your word count is so low you don't want to spend too long on this uh, that's an example of a paragraph here uh, another example maybe slightly better because it's got a whole section on ethics and make sure you put the appendix uh, something you can do later maybe but every single document will need to be in the appendix so your letter of consent your briefing notes your standardized instructions your debriefing notes all of that needs to be in the appendix referred to in the text very important again so although you might not be able to do this right now because you haven't done your appendix um, you will have to do it later Okay, the second part is participants. It's a little difficult. Sometimes people don't do very well there. So you really need to include um, relevant characteristics of the participants. And I, if it's random, just don't say it. If it's just like they have blonde hair or you know <laughs> stuff like that, it's not interesting. So I'm exaggerating here, but you know what I mean. It needs to be relevant to your experiment. I would always include quite a lot of detail about where they come from. So where did you find them? You know, um, how did you select them? Um, was it a class? Was it, well, if it was a class, what class was it? What school you're in? What country? What kind of school it is? You know, anything like that. It, you need all the detail about um, those students. I would also include gender. That's always kind of interesting. Uh, age. To make sure they're over 16 but also some some of you might use parents or teachers so you might want to give an idea of the the range of ages you're using 
And then um, anything else. So for some experiments, for example, the language, their first language is very important. It could make a difference. So whether they speak English as a first language or not is an example of a characteristics that is important. So anything you find relevant in your participants, put it there. Okay. Then the sampling method. Uh, ideally, the sampling should be random, but in your case, it's very rarely or even never the case. Like It's not like you put an advert in a newspaper and got a completely random bunch of people. Um, in fact, most of you ask people if they want to be in the experiment, so that's not quite random. It's called an opportunity sample. So that's what you should say, and you need to justify it, and that's hard. Why did you use that? You know, and of course it's convenience and all that, but you might want to find a couple of slightly better arguments for using um, opp opportunity sample. Or at least explain that it didn't adversely affect the experiment too much. Or explain why you didn't get a random sample. Okay? So that's it. It's not that bad. And again, it's not that long. See? That's one example. That's another example. It doesn't need to be super long. And then the procedure, um, you need to have all the material there. Some people have a list of material used uh, at this stage in a bullet point form. I think that's a good idea. So they have a little subsection called material. Um, okay. In this section, you really need to have very detailed procedure. So you really need to say, you know, it, it's super descriptive. And the point is that anyone who reads this should be able to reproduce your experiment without any problem. So it needs to be very detailed. Like, uh, we asked the participants to come in the classroom. Um, they sat down. We gave them the consent letter. They signed it. We reminded them of their rights. And then we, uh, we read the... Um, instructions and they did this and they did that like you really need to be super specific is is uh, important because anyone should be able to replicate your experiment okay um, at this stage it's super important as well that you, every step of the way you refer to the appendices so again it might not be done yet but you should say so we ask students to sign a consent letter in brackets see appendix A um, we read them the briefing notes in brackets appendix B um, we showed them a picture appendix C and so on everything must be you know spelled out very clearly okay and that um, doesn't need to be extremely long either it's okay to write bullet points because it might be very clear or you know numbered points but it needs to be um, descriptive sentences you can't just say sat down, you know, or anything like that. You need to be descriptive. All of these three, although it's all under the section method, you really need to have the proper title every time. Method, participants, method, um, design, and all that. So it's all very organized. Honestly, if you follow the instructions properly, you will do well. It's a lot of this is about instructions, okay? So it's not difficult, it's just it needs to be done exactly as the guide says, okay? And next time I will talk to you about results.